Vince, are you ready for rapid fire? Oh, I'm so ready. My voice is ready. I can tell you that. I know you're 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 kind of you're wearing you know you're wearing down as Oof. we grind through this show here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> your my, first the, show back in almost a week. My solo time in my bedroom. Uh, well, that sounded terrible. Uh, <laughs> being alone in my room and not talking to anybody for so many days. Uh-huh. I had like I had to like retrain myself to talk today. It was very weird. It was very weird. I was like, this does not sound like me. So Notre Dame staffers dressed up like leprechauns to welcome 2025 recruits to campus over the weekend during the junior recruiting weekend, the big junior weekend bonanza on campus. The leprechaun thing kind of got mixed reviews, at least on social media anyway. Do you buy or sell the move? So last year they did like the Secret Service thing where they were like patting guys down. And then this time they dressed up. Yeah, yeah. this time they dressed up like leprechauns and, you know, the whole deal. And if I'm being honest, I think both of the ideas are corny and dumb. (laughs) I do. But the recruits all loved it. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. If they're enjoying it, they're loving it, then I'm loving it too. And if they got to act like fools to make it happen – and then so be it. I don't care what everybody else thinks. I only care what these four and five star kids think. And they loved it. So do it again. F- figure out some other corny thing to do next year. I think it was a great idea. The decaf says kind of corny. And yeah, you know, I I especially do think like I would have a hard time as a grown man dressing up in a leprechaun outfit, you know? Like Just- I mean, you're not and wrong. seeing grown men, it's like to me, it, it it does feel a little bit cornier than even the Secret Service thing. But you're absolutely right. If the kids love it, which they appeared to love it, yeah, who the hell cares what anybody else thinks? You know, that's you were you were there because right. it's a recruiting weekend. You're bringing in recruits. You're everything you do is in service to the recruits who are coming on campus. And if they like that's it, all that matters. Who cares what anybody else yeah. thinks? You know, like, yeah, like when they had, uh, when they, Chad had, they, they appeared to have a really good time with it. They appeared yeah. to have a lot of fun with it. Remember when they met those recruits at the airport with, uh, with like the boom box and they were doing like uh-huh. dances and act, I mean, acting like absolute idiots, but the recruits enjoyed it. Like, okay. I mean, the, the livelihood of these adult men are tied to the decisions of these children. And if the children like it and they're going to give their pledge to Notre Dame because of it. I would do it too. I'll just say it. I would do it too. Yes. <laughs> Father David says between DK and Vince, the show just got weird. <laughs> I mean, that was my bad. I didn't mean to go down that road. NH though says you do have to have a certain personality you do. to pull it off. And I think that the, you know, the, the, the people do. who are wearing those mm-hmm. leprechaun suits have the right personality to yep. pull it off. They you believe know? me, they didn't pick like the dolt in the corner right to like dress up like a leprechaun i mean yes, they got this was, guys... not, this was not a punishment like right you have to wear it you know chad bowden right. actually wore the leprechaun suit right so the, you know, there's the certain people leader. yes you know like we used to have uh a, a a mascot at home depot like homer you know the the big goofy looking guy that i would have a bigger problem with <laughs> well they would have certain people dress up in that costume that they know would be energetic and want to hang out with the fan you know the the people at the store and you know that kind of stuff right they're not just going to put some idiot who's just going to stand there you know what i mean you, you you pick the right people and that's what they did yes tommy asking if his video made it into rapid fire tonight tommy unfortunately at this point it's almost like a week old because of when you sent it to me because we oh. haven't had any shows yeah. until tonight so unfortunately <laughs> no but i believe it was uh, i believe he sent me the one about the reporter asking Todd Bowles, the oh, Tampa Bay coach, hilarious. about going to Detroit, you know, and he's like, that, you know, we play in a dome, right? Th- that <laughs> was common. And he, the, the fact that he let her ask the entire question was, he was very polite about yeah, it. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Brent, congratulations on your 49ers winning. I will say, going to have to admit this literally the first time in my life. I have pulled for the 49ers in a game. Really? Why yeah. is that? Did you just not like the Packers or? I just decided I'm done with the Packers. Okay. <laughs> with hey. all these playoff losses, they have, you know, it's it's, over. it's worse than 
you know, anything the 49ers probably, you know, mm -hmm. I basically Joe Montana and the Niners traumatized me when I was still, you know, an early teenager, you know, like at this point, I won't say I'm completely over that, but <laughs> more playoff losses have started to mount that to Green Bay. And so I just, I, I could not see the Packers. Yes. Bears fans. We can all yeah. unite. Come on over. What happened over the weekend. Come on That's over. Right. Yes. So speaking of the recruiting weekend, the recruits, you know, they did their photos, taking pictures in different uniforms yeah. during their visit. And one of them was quarterback Brady Smigel, I believe mm -hmm. is how you say his name, yep. was wearing the white pants with a green jersey and the white numbers. Rate that look on a scale of one to ten. Oh, that's like a 9.75. Uh, I think that's a solid look. I first of all, I, I've I've gone on record as to saying they cannot get rid of the white pants, and they need to bring them out more often on the road. Okay, I'm thinking like one to two times a year. You bring those puppies out for a home game, like a night game. I am on board with that choice. White pants, green top, gold helmet, shimmering in the in the night. Be a night game. Oh, yeah. Just that. Oh, just beautiful. I'm turning it up to 11. Oh, it's it's not just go. one to 10. This one okay. goes to 11. It's I like, like it. It's, it's the perfect uniform, I think, oh, to me. It's, great. it's like the, the the white pants with the green top. And, the, you know, like you said, then the gold. It's basically the green uniforms that they wore when, you know, when they wore the, you know, against Ohio State, except they're substituting the green pants yeah. for white pants. It's simple. It's a very clean, simple oh. look. It is it is a, as good as I think as you're yeah. going to get. It yeah. needs to make an appearance, I think, next year. Yes. I will also say the white on white against the snow was a good look, too. Like yeah. that, was a, that was a really, really cool look as well. But, yeah, the green on white that we've all been hoping for and we've seen people mock it up and all of that, it's beautiful. It was even more beautiful in person. Yep. Oh, fill in the blank. It's blank that Tommy Reese is reportedly in talks to be hired as the Cleveland Browns tight ends coach. Interesting, I guess is the best word for it. Like I don't I don't look at this as necessarily a demotion per se, but it is. I mean, he's he's going to be a position coach, but he's going to the NFL and I think I don't know Tommy personally. I've always been under the impression NFL was the goal, right? And mm -hmm. it all he, they, it also said he's going to be the tight ends coach with uh, some pass game responsibilities. Right. Like he's going to be he's going to help coordinate the pass game, right? I, I think it's one step closer to being OC in the NFL, and I think that's what he wants to do. So I I don't look at this as everybody's like, oh, you know, went from Notre Dame and then he got kicked out of Alabama. Okay, you can rewrite history however you want it. That's fine. Where do you go after being the OC at Alabama and Notre Dame, like at the college level? Where do you go? Because I don't. Well, and, and where you can go is based on the availability of, of, of jobs that are open. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, so it's like can the get rumor like a, about, you know, the rumor started about, oh, he's going to be co-AC OC at Georgia and all that different. And obviously that was nothing but right. the rumor started by, you know, there's somebody only, without a name on a Twitter handle. Of basically. course. But, there's only so many jobs you can take at the college level that wouldn't be a step down. Right. right? And if right. your goal is to make it to the well, especially NFL, if you were at Alabama. Yeah. That's what I'm I mean, saying. That's literally what I'm saying. almost everyone is a step down from there. You were OC at Notre Dame. You're OC at Alabama. The next job at the college level is either going to be a huge step down or you go to the NFL. It, I think now is his time to make that jump to the NFL. And he's going to do it with a quasi coordinating role as well. Yeah, so. I was literally thinking last, like if we would have had a show, I think Jesse and I were going to talk, in a, or it might have come up on the Friday wrap, but, you know, just like if we would have had a show after Tuesday last week, Tommy, the, you know, the topic of Tommy was was going to be on the docket. Where is yeah. he going to go? And my my thought at that point, because of, you know, again, like getting another, getting at least a lateral move to another offensive coordinator spot, in college was going to be tricky, you know, just yeah. because of what you talked about. It's like who, you know, and, and the kind of opportunities, would you have had to take a step down? My thought was 
maybe the NFL as a quarterback's coach. Yeah, yeah. Be- because of what does he want to do? You know, just like what you said, like I, I think we've all kind of had – in our head that he ultimately wants to be like at the very least an NFL offensive coordinator, if not an NFL head coach. So this gets him to the NFL. He's a tight ends coach for now as like you said, he's going to have some passing game responsibilities so that that keeps right. him more involved than just right. coaching tight ends. And maybe it turns into within a year or two, you know, it, at least a quarterback's coach type thing, if not an offensive coordinator yeah, within I, a couple of years. It gets him yeah. it gets him on the path to where he wants to be as an NFL coach. So I think it's great. Yeah. It's a great move for him. And I, I I originally said, you know, you know, look for him to go back to LSU. <clears throat> it's not go back, but go back with Kelly at LSU. But then I forgot how that all went down, to be honest with you. That that bridge was burnt, folks. I think that ship sailed. That bur- that bridge was burnt and it was it was set a fire like with a flamethrower when he turned down the offer to go down to LSU. There there was no going back. I mean that 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 was never going to happen again. Uh, and the way that it was handled on one side was not very professional, and I did it just was not going to happen. Again. And it wasn't from Tommy's side in terms. All right, of, I wasn't going to say it. I was just going to say one side, but all right. what we understand, yeah, it wasn't yeah. from Tommy's side. Yes, <clears throat> right, right. Just leave it at that, I guess. Yeah. So he was I don't not think very door, happy when Tommy turned yeah. him down and stayed here at Notre Dame. That door, that door was not opened uh, this time around. I wouldn't think, even if it was in Brian Kelly's best interest, which I think it probably would have been. That door was not going to be opened. Right. Absolutely. Fill in the blank. It's blank. The Chiefs stopped a Bills fake punt last night with just 10 men on the field on defense. And the Chief who made the tackle was Drew Tranquil. Unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> you, you can't you can't write that script. There's I mean, some serendipity here, right? Yeah. You think? <laughs> I mean, look, every time I hear 10 men on the field, I will always think Ohio State Notre Dame, and that will never change. That yep. will never change for the rest of my life. And so I hear that, I think, oh, Notre Dame, and oh, Drew Tranquil makes the tackle. Crazy. By the way, before I forget, Anthony, thank you very much for the super chat and for the uh, the comment there as well. But but yeah, it's like when when it ended up being Drew Tranquil make it. You know, when, when they when they the, were you watching the game when that happened live? By any chance? No. Okay. Well, I had it on, but I didn't see that exact play. The so crazy no, thing is, Jay Feely, a freaking kicker, it was the sideline reporter. You got Romo and Nance up in the booth. Jay Feely, the sideline re- reporter, is the one who had to point out the fact that the Chiefs only had 10 men on the field. It's like, hello, Tony are Romo, serious? where are you? Like, wow. you're, you are, you know, one of the two highest paid analysts in the game so feely points it out but then when they said that that uh drew tranquil made the stop with 10 men on the field it's like the first thing you think about is notre dame ohio state 10 men on the field and a notre dame guy made the stop and then you know to just to kind of add to it damar hamlin is the guy who was the ball carrier on that play and of course you know the hamlin stuff from from last year, you know, with 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 the health and the, you know they had to stop the game and you know him oh, being yeah. out as long as he, like that's the guy who was the ball carrier and it's he's a guy who like never sees the ball but the Chiefs blew it up and it was a Notre Dame player with ten men on the field who actually who made the stop on the play. Yes. Who knew the Notre Dame's hype man, by the way, of former players, Drew Tranquil. Yes, the Chiefs fumbled through the end zone last night. In that game, of course, after like three plays after that fumble, they fumble through the, you know, the old fumble through the end zone at the one yard line, which makes it Buffalo Bills ball. It makes it a touchback. So Notre Dame alum and Seattle defensive back Julian Love said on X last night, love the touchback rule. There's already enough rules that favor the offense. So Vince, do you buy or sell what Julian Love is saying? It was a it was a huge turning point in that game. Uh, Eric, it should have been a huge turning point in that game. I mean, the Chiefs were about to cement that thing and just put it away, and they end up fumbling through the end zone. It's like, yep. oh, oh, oh wow! I mean, because you knew what was going to happen. I 
I don't get as outraged about this rule as others do. I, I just, I, it's always been a rule. Just because it's always been a rule. It's just, and always, you're just, it's just, you're just over it now. I'm, yeah, <laughs> just, I'm numb to it. Like, we don't see Don Beebe yeah, it's bringing up some bad memories for you, I suppose. But <laughs> well, the Cowboys they won still the won that game, They did so. win the game. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that play is not etched in, in history if that doesn't happen. Like, they, I don't know. It just, it doesn't bother me. It just, it, it's never bothered. Maybe because my team has never been on the negative end of that particular play in a big moment, but like, it's just never bothered me. So um, I, I just, it doesn't bother me. I, I agree with Julian Love. Keep it the way it is. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, all the controversy in that Cowboys Lions game a few weeks ago was what? It was, you know, the, did, did the guy, you know, the to tackle eligible report and all that stuff. Well, earlier, in the game of C.D. Lamb crosses the goal line with the football in his hands. It's a touchdown, but he did the same thing. He yeah. fumbled through the end zone and it and it comes back, you know, not exclusive to that play. I'm, uh, you know, I'm just pointing it out, but I've just always felt like, like, what did the defense do other than maybe jar the ball loose that they should be rewarded with having the ball in that situation? I've just never got why it becomes an automatic turnover. and. You know, I guess the USFL, which of course is disbanded now, like the USFL did a thing where the offense does get the ball back. I've just always thought like, okay, it's loss of down. You give the offense the ball back, but it's at the 20 yard line instead of, you know, the one or the, you know, wherever the fumble happened to occur, you know, you move them back. So it's like the next down. And if, you know, if it was a fourth down play, then the defense does take the ball, but any other play, Move it back at the 20. I've just never understood why the defense gets rewarded so greatly for really not I mean, doing turnover, that much. Turnover it's basically a fluke play. play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I, I just wonder why they came up with that particular rule in the first place, to be honest. It's a good question. Good question. So after watching Bill's kicker, Tyler Bass, miss the 44-yard field goal attempt near the end of the loss to Kansas City last night, Ross Tucker says kickers have no place in football, Vince. Uh, Do you buy or sell that? Ross, of course, former NFL offensive lineman. Of course, it's a huge sell. It's called football. You have to, <laughs> you got to use your feet on the ball sometime. <laughs> One okay. of the few times they actually use their feet in football. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I mean, th- there's been kickers involved in football forever, like since day one. Why would you X out? a part of the game because you don't think anybody is good at it or or you don't think that they're real football. I listened to what he had to say, you know, his whole spiel. And he basically said, kickers aren't football players. We don't expect them to run and kick and or run and and pass and throw and do all these taking the Reggie Brooks approach. Friend Reggie book Brooks notoriously hard on kickers and punters over the course of his career. (laughs) Do are, are the same things expected of a kicker as regular football players? No, it's not. But who's the first one to get on a punter for missing a tackle once the kick returner or the punt returner has gone through the other 10 guys, right? They're yeah. expected to be able to tackle, right? They're, they're expected to be football players every now and again. And so it's a part of the game. You You don't have to like it, but it's still a part of the game. Bryce McPherson saved a touchdown once this season. Remember that? When he hey, ran down that guy. My son saved two touchdowns this year by making nice. tackles. Okay. Nice. So, you know, you can still be a, an athlete and be a football player just because his fat butt can't keep the ball between the poles. You know, don't be disparaging other guys for doing it. I mean, everyone on a football team has a different job. An offensive lineman has a different job than the quarterback or a wide receiver or most of the time back. they don't even touch you the know? ball, period. Right. Right. Like as an offensive lineman, your job is to block as a kicker. Right. Your job is to kick as a quarterback. Your job is to, you know, get like get in and out of the right plays, make th- whatever it happens. Everyone's got a different job. Absolutely. You can't just disregard a kicker because once in a while he misses one. You know, like what about the times that he that he actually wins a game that maybe yeah. you had no business winning exactly. because he made a great kick of, you know, like 55, you know, 60 yards or whatever it happens to be. So kickers are people, too. And they're football players too. You gotta Dang stand it. up for them every now and then. Come on. I, I will say that football is one of the sports where eat for position by position, 
is the most different in a, on a football team, right? I mean, you look at any other sport, soccer, baseball, uh, basketball. Yes, they have different positions and they have different responsibilities, but there's not much out there that's as different as a football player from a lineman to a quarterback, to a running back, to a kicker, you know, whatever. Those are some seriously different body types and some seriously different expectations from, you know, start to finish. And that's what makes football great. I agree. I agree. Are you going to make it, Vince? You're, you're, you're kind of, you're, uh, you're I'm struggling, but I'm, here. we're good. good. We're good. All right. Woo. We're coming down the home stretch. All right. So Iowa women's basketball star Caitlin Clark got trucked yesterday by a fan storming the court after Ohio State upset Clark and the Hawkeyes. So first question, block, charge, or flop? Flop. <laughs> flop i saw did you see all the angles of it today i did i have seen them all I just i don't see she how... looks a little like with the whole yeah the and she like and... her head goes like snaps back and then she's laying on the and it just to be helped off the court like you are a division like the best women's basketball player arguably in the country an athlete a d1 athlete and you just got taken out by a girl who is charging the court with her phone in the air. Like, I just, I'm, I'm sorry. I, it didn't look that that's bad basically to me. What it was, right. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm running and I've got my, I'm doing my, you know, that's the biggest problem here is like, you know, everyone with their right. stupid phone. It's like, get off your yes. phone. So to, so to that, I'm still going to go charge. It was definitely a okay. charge. It, it was, okay. it was an awkward looking fall to the floor. I will definitely say that. But she she did go to the floor pretty hard, and she was hit pretty hard in the whole. Day. It's like, but the just the look of the thing you can't get past the look when you see her kind of pirouette a yeah. little bit, throw her hands in the air. And yes, she back. was like, oh. there was. I don't know that it was a complete flop, but there was like, there was there were some elements of a flop. Was, in there, yes, but I've still got to call esque. charge. Okay, all that. right, fair enough. <laughs> uh, I guess not charge. That would be block, right? Because well, who, who's on charge, offense would, there? Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. They're both moving. Yeah, that's right. So she did have to be helped off the floor. Where do you stand on the whole court storming? I are you pro? Are you against? Where are you? Well, this is like the old man in me coming out. Like I, as I get older, I feel like I've seen most things, and so storming a court or a field is ridiculous for the most part for me. Uh, I, I just, I'm not a big fan of it in general. Is this because you have to do crowd control at, <clears throat> you know, like high school yeah, games right. now? Is that, <laughs> that's part of it. Uh, but I will also say when I was a kid, when I was in college, like I couldn't wait to storm the field. You know what I mean? Like that was what we wanted to do. And so I get it from, a, I get it from a, a, from a student standpoint, right? I, I get it. I just, I'm not a big fan of it, I guess, as I get older into adulthood. I'm just, I don't know. I don't, it just seems like it happens too much. And when something happens too much, I, it, it takes away the fun of it for me. Well, see, and to me, it's like, to me, it. I don't really do think it happens. That it, Like, I think like 95% of the time, everything is okay. But then especially when you have a high profile, literally the most high profile Right, women's basketball player gets run over like this after well, after what was a great game one. It was an overtime game, sure. and you know the whole thing. Like one of the first big experiences of the Notre Dame women's 2001 national championship run. By by the way, the anniversary was just last Monday, a week ago today, Martin Luther King Day. But the crowd stormed the floor after the game. And it was one of the coolest things ever. It's like Notre Dame beats Connecticut. The, you know, the, yeah. the students rush the floor and it's just, you know, it was like a great scene and everyone's having fun and excitement. That's I UConn, do realize man. that like, sometimes things like this can happen there. there. I think that there just needs, they need to find a way to like, if you're the opposing team and you see, you know, like player store, like they need to, they need to come up with sort of a procedure. Like, yeah. here's what's gonna, here's what you need to do if if this happens. You know, right. you know, like shelter in place and you know, like wait for everyone to go. Just like head you. to the scores table. Yeah. You know, and yeah, then once stand everyone on the is out there, or something, I don't then know. you get out of there. I don't I mean, who wants to who wants to practice when you lose on the road? Like, yeah, I mean, you don't want to see anybody get hurt, hurt, but yeah, but at the same time, <clears> it's like 
And it wasn't malicious by any stretch right. of the imagination. Right. You know what you I mean? You want to see the students have fun. You know, yeah. and that, you know, then on well, I'll just I'll save that one. Fill in the blank. Okay. It's blank that after the massive success of Top Gun Maverick, Top Gun 3 is now reportedly in development. <sighs> Disappointing. I think that that's before you even said disappointing. Just yeah. just the response was, I think we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, because look, I thought Top Gun Maverick was aces. Like, it was really good. It was as close to perfection as you're going to get. Especially after waiting 30 yes. plus years for yes. a sequel to Absolutely. come out. Absolutely, because you had Iceman in there, and obviously that's probably not going to happen yeah. again. You're not going to get ice again. You got, I mean... How, how long is uh, is Maverick going to be a captain? I mean, you know, I, right. they they did a good job of explaining it up to this point. I get it. You know, he would, he would get up and then he would get knocked down. Get up. You know, the whole thing. And Maverick would be there to save. I mean, Iceman would be there to save his butt every time. It was a great story. It was a great movie. I just watched it again the other day, actually. Um, great story. I watched it during the second half of the Cowboys losing to the Packers. <laughs> there you go. I mean... It was a great movie. Let it go. Let yes. well enough, leave well enough alone. But you knew they, they couldn't because it made more than a half a billion dollars. I know, but do you billion think this was going to do that and too? You knew that you knew that they were going to try to go back to the well. And that's, man, you know, again, they had 30 years to get it right and get the story right. And Tom Cruise had to sign off on it and they did everything right. You know, all the beats that connected back to the original all this different stuff. They found just the right mix of nostalgia yes, that yes. wasn't, you know, like over the top corny and stuff like that. But Absolutely. now, so now, you know, it's, it's like, they always say, you know, like a musical artist has their whole life to write the first album. And then they've got to come out with the second album, you know, like in 10 months, basically, you know, if the first one was yeah. successful and what always happens, the sophomore album, the second one is always like, eh, you know, there's there's typically a lot more mixed reviews with the second one. And it's the same way here. You had 30 years to get the second one right. And now you're going to, you know, try to crank something out in a couple of years. And I just can't see them coming anywhere close. Like, can't even I can't even imagine what the storyline could be, you know, like to try to to try to follow up the first one. And, the, you know, like you said, it's like, how long can Tom Cruise... <laughs> How long can Maverick stay a captain when everyone yeah. else, when everyone else's age is an admiral now, you know? So. Exactly. I mean, and look, I realized Tom Cruise is ageless and it was, it was a great movie. It was a great movie, but in order, <clears throat> what do you need for a good Top Gun movie? You need Maverick to be, you know, on the verge of getting kicked out of the Navy. Well, he should have been retired. So that should be gone. He needs to have a love interest. Thought he just had a love. I thought they were settling down. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I and you've got to have some sort of a conflict, uh, you know, with with personal life and the whole thing. And you had that with Goose and his son and the whole, like, where, where do you go from here? I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't either. I'm not a fan. I guess Tom Cruise has still got to sign off on this whole, you know, so it's Dude, not a don't done do deal it. yet. Like, to me... To make I another I Mission Impossible how, movie. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, you know, <laughs> like he's found a way to keep that Mission Impossible thing going for as long as it is. Don't ruin, mm -mm. don't ruin Top Gun by by pushing something out too soon. Yeah, like even my wife liked it, and that's saying something. <laughs> so you can't mess with that kind of perfection, man. I know, I know. All right, well, that's going to do it for tonight. Vince has got to. Uh, Vince has got to recoup Oof. once again. He yeah. might be back Wednesday. I don't know. At this rate, He's gonna go gargle some salt water. Your recovery, your recovery time, you know, is like you mm. you, you need a little bit longer. It sounds yeah. like in between these days. And so. I didn't realize that until I started talking today. Uh, so we'll see what you know. When our, part of your job is just talking the whole time, makes it interesting, right? All right, so that's gonna do it for tonight. Thanks everybody for being here. Thanks for to uh, to Vince for uh, for coming back around, working it through. Yeah. Hopefully, baby. hopefully, mailbag show on Wednesday. We'll be here for you. Love it. All right, subscribe, rate, review, hit the like button before you leave. We'll talk to you later on IB Nation Sports Talk.